All right, Instrument Pilot Oral Exam Guide, Pre-Flight Part 1, Pilot Qualifications. So first thing, what do you need to have in your logbook in order to go for your uh, instrument rating? What do you need to have logged? You have to have logged 50 hours of cross-country flight time as PIC. Um, all right, so obviously what you did with your instructor during your private doesn't work. It's got to be as PIC. Um, and 10 hours must have been in an airplane, but just really remember 50 hours cross country, um, 40 hours of instrument time. This can be actual or simulated, um, but 15 hours uh, must have been received from an instructor uh, who, of course, holds a, an instrument rating. Um, all right. Three hours of instrument flight training from an authorized instructor in an airplane that is appropriate to the instrument airplane rating within two calendar months before the date of the practical test. All right, so three hours of this training must have been done within the last two calendar months. You'd be surprised how much people spread this out. Instrument flight training on cross-country flight procedures, including one cross-country flight in an airplane with an authorized instructor that is performed under IFR. You must file for this long cross-country um, with, of course, with an ATC facility, and that involves a flight of 250 nautical miles, that's total, along airways or ATC directed routing, so you can be vectored, uh, an instrument approach at each airport, three different kinds of approaches with the use of navigation systems. So you really, you're going to fly to a destination, you're going to fly to another, and then you're going to fly back home. And each of those three landings will be a different approach. The total trip must be 250 nautical miles. That's not just one leg. Total trip. 50 hours cross country, 40 hours of instrument, three hours in the last two calendar months, a 250 nautical mile trip um, under IFR. When is an instrument rating required? <clears throat> if you're flying under IFR, instrument flight rules. In other words, if you're on an IFR flight plan, you need an instrument rating. In weather conditions, less than the minimum for VFR flight. So if you're an IMC. Class Alpha airspace, don't forget this one. If you're at 180 and above, Class Alpha airspace. Special VFR, if you're in Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo, so special VFR and controlled airspace uh, between sunset and sunrise. If you are carrying passengers for hire on cross-country flights uh, in excess of 50 nautical miles, so you can go up to 50, um, or at night. So uh, um, if you're doing a commercial flight and you're going beyond 50 nautical miles or flying at night with passengers, you must have an instrument rating. Let's summarize that. So it's really kind of basically four. Um, if you're on an IFR flight plan, you need to be instrument rated. If you're in IMC, if you're if you're in IMC, uh, which and also special VFR, you need a rating. Class Alpha airspace rating. Commercial flight with passengers beyond 50 nautical miles or at night, you need a rating. What are the recency of experience requirements to be PIC of a flight under IFR? And I'm just going to go right to it. The six hits we like to talk about. Um, in order to be current, you got to have six hit hits. That's six approaches in the last six months. You got to fly six approaches in six months. That includes holding, intercepting, and tracking courses. Holding, intercepting, and tracking courses. Uh, that's the hit. Um, if you've got that, uh, you uh, should be current. Just a few other things to remember um, for recency of experience requirements. To carry passengers. Uh, same thing as your private pilot. Three takeoffs and landings within the preceding 90 days in an aircraft of the same category, class, and type. Uh, if a type rating is required, landings must be full stop at night or in a tailwheel. All right. Must a flight instructor be present if you're planning on using an aviation training device to mean your IFR currency? So we're talking about um, basically simulator use. We know there's different types of simulators. Um, what we're looking at here is, is if you're, if you're, if you're rated and you're trying to maintain your currency, do you need an instructor present? And the answer is 
No, you do not. A pilot may accomplish the recency of experience requirements in a full flight simulator, flight training device, FTD, or aviation training device, ATD, provided the device represents the category of aircraft for the instrument rating privileges to be maintained, and the pilot performs the tasks and iterations in simulated instrument conditions. So you just want to um, turn on the setting that puts you in the soup <clears throat> and also gets you down to your minimums in the clouds. Now, a logbook or training record must specify the training device, time, and the content. That's what you're putting in your logbook. This can confuse people about how you log simulated time in your logbook. Um, um, yeah, so you must log the training device, the time, and the content. Again, an instructor is not required to be present. Are you required to have an instrument instructor? Are you required to have an instructor present when using time in an FFS, FTD, or ATD to acquire instrument aeronautical experience for a pilot certificate or rating? What we're talking about here is you're doing your instrument training, you're doing some time in the simulator. Do you need an instructor present? The answer is yes. Even though to log instrument time, in the air, you don't need an, uh, an instructor present. You need a safety pilot. If you're in the simulator, you need the instructor. Um, a person may use time in a full flight simulator, that's the FFS, flight training device, FTD, or aviation training device, ATD, for acquiring instrument aeronautical experience for a pilot certificate or rating, provided an authorized instructor is present to observe the time Basically, just making sure you're not pausing unnecessarily, that you are doing this in real time and that you are actually doing this in the, the IMC settings in the simulator. And they must sign the person's logbook or training record to verify the time and the content of the training session. All right. If a pilot allows his or her instrument currency to expire, what can be done to become current again? So back to that six hits right? Six approaches in the last six months with holding, intercepting, and tracking courses. Let's say you have gone beyond six months. Well, here we go. A pilot is current for that first six months following their instrument check ride or proficiency check. If the pilot has not accomplished at least six approaches, including holding, intercepting, and tracking courses, six hits, through the use of navigation systems, Within this first six months, guess what? You are no longer legal to file and fly under IFR. So you need to do your six hits within six months or do not file. If you want to become legal again, the regulations allow a grace period, which is the following six months, in which a pilot may get current. How do you do this? You need to find an appropriately rated safety pilot in simulated IFR conditions only, acquire the six approaches, blah, 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 blah. Um, if the if this second six month period lapses, what do you have to do? You're not current and 12 months have gone by. A pilot may reinstate his or her currency by accomplishing an instrument proficiency check. Here we go. Given by an examiner a double I, an authorized instructor, or an FAA approved person to conduct instrument practical tests. You really, fine, you just gotta go up and do a proficiency, proficiency check, work with an instructor, um, and, and get current again, but you're looking at a much bigger fee now had you done it within that, within that six month grace period with a safety pilot. <clears throat> so it really works in your favor to take care of this either within six or 12 calendar months. Now we talked about um, that uh, safety pilot. Uh, that safety pilot must be a private pilot that's rated in the airplane, which you are um, instrument current in. Uh, we'll come back to that. Yeah, here we go, yeah. Required qualifications for a person to act as safety pilot. The safety pilot must here we go, three items really. Possess a pri at least a private pilot certificate with category and class. Category and class ratings appropriate to the aircraft being flown. 
you must possess an appropriate medical certificate. The safety pilot has to have, um, they have to be medically current um, uh, because they are acting as a required crew member, which is why they get to log PIC time. If the flight is to be conducted on an IFR flight plan, the person acting as PIC of the flight must hold an instrument rating and be instrument current. That last one's kind of interesting. So really that, that last one is just if you're in that first six calendar months, because you can't file IFR if you've gone past six months without six hits. All right. This question is worth remembering. What is the difference between current and proficient? I know this answer is all over YouTube, but here we go. Being current means that a pilot has accomplished the minimum FAA regulatory requirements within a specific time period, so he or she can exercise the privileges of the certificate. It means that you're legal. The FAA recognizes that you are legally allowed to conduct the flight. Doesn't necessarily mean you've got the skill. This is where proficiency comes in. Proficient means you've actually got the skill and confidence, the competence to be able to conduct the flight. You might be you might have just become instrument, you got your instrument rating and you're in the sixth calendar month. Um, you haven't done instrument, uh, after the rating, you haven't done any instrument flying in that entire time, not for five and a half months. You are legal to fly and file IFR. You are probably not proficient. So it'd be good to do some practice with, uh, go ahead and do your six hits. That's a good time to do your six hits. <clears throat> Can a pilot who does not hold a medical certificate but does possess basic med authorization act as a safety pilot? Remember, they have to possess an appropriate medical certificate. All right, so only if the pilot is acting as PIC while performing the duties of a safety pilot. Uh, the statutory language prescribing basic med says it only applies to people acting as PIC. Basic med cannot be exercised by safety pilots who are not acting as PIC yet are required crew members. I'll just let you kind of digest that for a little while. There's some subtleties of legal language there. <clears throat> okay, as an instrument rated pilot, can you fly IFR under basic med? Pilots can fly as basic med in a covered aircraft under VFR or IFR. There's no prohibition against flying an IMC, but basic med doesn't change the requirement to hold an instrument rating and be instrument current to act as PIC under IFR. Basic med does not relieve an aircraft from the requirement to be approved for, for IFR operations for flight under IFR. There you go. What conditions are necessary for a pilot to log instrument time? A person may log instrument time only for the flight time when the person operates the aircraft solely by reference to instruments. This is the big thing. That's the language there. Solely by reference to instruments under actual or simulated instrument flight conditions. All right. When logging instrument time, what should be included in each logbook entry? Each entry must include the location and type of each instrument approach accomplished and the name of the safety pilot if required. You don't need more than that. You don't need like a, a safety pilot license number or anything like that. Just the name of the safety pilot with the location and type of each instrument approach. What conditions must exist in order to log actual instrument flight time? The FAA has never defined the term actual instrument time. That's interesting to know. 14 CFR Part 61 defines instrument flight time as that flight time when a person operates an aircraft solely by reference to instruments under actual or simulated instrument flight conditions. 
A reasonable guideline for determining when to log actual instrument time would be any flight time that is accumulated in IMC with flight being conducted solely by reference to instruments. And the definition of IMC is weather conditions below the VFR minimum specified for visual meteorological conditions. Um, these minimums are found in 14 CFR 91.155. All of this is probably seems kind of obvious and it's stuff you discuss in your training. Uh, but there's the official language. All right, what is the definition of the term flight time? Flight time means pilot time that commences when an aircraft moves under its own power for the purpose of flight and ends when the aircraft comes to rest after landing. This is interesting, and I'm sure what pe I'm, I'm curious what people do. I and all my colleagues log our time based on the Hobbs. Uh, so basically, as long as the prop is spinning, we log time. But we may not be moving. We might just be sitting there waiting for a clearance or something. But we're still logging the time. Uh, if you're on, and I was just asking somebody, if you're on four flight, there's a there's a log book there, and it's based on your GPS movement. So there, it actually fits this definition better that it's based on when the aircraft is moving. Um, yeah, moves under its own power for the purpose of flight and ends when the aircraft comes to rest after landing. Um, that uh, I would say that the four flight uh, logbook seems to be, um, fits the, uh, the, the, the language here better than the Hobbes time, but nevertheless, the standard seems to be Hobbes. All right, what requirements must be met before a pilot can log an instrument approach procedure for currency or training. This is actually pretty important. I've seen some, some interesting things in people's logbooks here. Um, when can you actually log that approach? We talked about how we log the approach, but when can you actually do it for your currency or training? All right, here we go. Five items here. One, when conducted in an aircraft, FFS, that's full flight simulator, FTD, that's flight training device, or ATD, that's aviation training device. The pilot must operate that aircraft or authorized training device solely by reference to instruments. I think we've got that one, okay? We're, the, the whole thing, the whole point of instrument flying is, is you're operating by reference to instruments. Number two, when conducted in an aircraft, FFS, FTD, or ATD, the pilot must establish on each required segment of the IAP, Instrument Approach Procedure, to the Minimum Descent Altitude, MDA, or Decision Altitude, Decision Height, DA or DH. This second one, I've, this is where I've seen some discrepancy because I've seen people log in their logbooks their approaches during their training, but they have a buffer. Let's say 298 feet is your DA, your Decision Altitude, but they're uncomfortable with that. So they go around around 400 feet. That's their buffer. They never descend below 400 feet. You actually technically cannot log that because you did not fly it down to the DA, the decision altitude, in that case if it's a precision approach. Uh, so be careful with that. Number three, when conducted in an aircraft simulating instrument flight conditions, a full flight simulator, a flight training device, or an aviation training device, the simulated instrument meteorological conditions or IMC must continue to MDA or DA, which is what I just said, okay? <clears throat> you can't log it if the simulated conditions or actual don't go down to MDA or DA. When conducted in an aircraft, the flight must be conducted under actual or simulated instrument flight conditions. That's number four. Number five, when conducted in an aircraft maneuvering an IMC, the aircraft transitions from IMC to visual flight conditions on the final approach segment of the instrument approach procedure prior to or upon reaching MDA or DA. That's a mouthful. Let's try that again. When conducted in an aircraft maneuvering an IMC, the aircraft transitions from IMC to visual flight conditions on the final approach segment. This is a little bit different than simulated. In the simulated conditions, you have to get down to MDA or DA in the simulated conditions. If you're in an IMC, once you are on the, um, once you are past the final approach fix, you're in the final approach segment, 
once you're on that segment of the approach. If it goes visual, you can still log it. Okay. What are the four methods a pilot may use to conduct and then log IAPs, Instrument Approach Procedures? Actual instrument flight conditions flown in an aircraft. Great. Simulated instrument flight conditions using a view limiting device flown in an aircraft with a safety pilot. Simulated instrument flight conditions conducted in any FAA approved full flight simulator, FFS, flight training device, FTD, or aviation training device, ATD, or a combination of methods one through three, as I just talked about. Actual, simulated, um, simulated in the aircraft and um, simulated in the simulator. Is a pilot required to fly the entire approach procedure in order to log it for currency? We kind of talked about this, but except when being radar vectored to the final approach course or otherwise directed through an appropriate ATC clearance to a specific IAP, pilots must execute the entire IAP commencing at an IAF all these acronyms, but they're important. IAF, Initial Approach Fix. We'll talk about that in a second here, but or Associated Feeder Route and fly the initial segment, the intermediate segment, and the final segment of an IAP, Instrument Approach Procedure. If the pilot completes these segments or receives vectors to the final approach course, he or she may log the IAP. So let's break this down just a little bit more. What does it take in order to be a lot to, to you know, um, hmm. in order to log this for um, for currency? What are you required to do? You have to join the approach from an IAF, an initial approach fix. So if it says IF, what is IF? It's not instrument fix. IF is intermediate fix. That means you're going on the intermediate segment from that fix forward until your final approach segment. You're on an intermediate segment if you join the approach from an IF. Intermediate fix. It doesn't count unless ATC vectored you there. And then in that case, it counts. But if you don't own nav and you're practicing approaches own nav via a fix, get it from an IAF or instrument approach fix. Okay. Uh, when flying in uh, an instrument approach procedure, an IAP, in IMC, does the FAA require the ceiling to be at MDA or DA before the approach may be logged? We've actually kind of talked about this, right? Um, uh, we are in IMC here, instrument meteorological conditions. We're on an approach. Do we need those conditions down to the MDA or DA? No. The two possible outcomes are the aircraft will transition from IMC to VMC, allowing a landing, or it will remain in IMC and execute a missed approach at the MAP or DA. In either case, you can log it. 